Be my protection, O God, a mighty stronghold to save me. For you are my rock, my stronghold. Lead me, guide me for the sake of your name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You stand at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The man had relations with his wife Eve, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have produced a man with the help of the Lord. Next she brought, bore his brother Abel. Abel became a keeper of flocks, and Cain a tiller of the soil. While Abel, for his part, I'm sorry, in the course of time, Cain brought an offering to the Lord from the fruit of the soil. While Abel, for his part, brought one of the best firstlings of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering he did not. Cain greatly resented this and was crestfallen. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you so resentful and crestfallen? If you did well, you can hold up your head. But if not, Sin is a demon lurking at the door. His urge is toward you, you, yet you can be his master. Cain said to his brother Abel, Let us go out in the field. When they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord asked Cain, Where is your brother Abel? He answered, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord then said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the soil. Therefore you shall be banned from the soil that opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. If you till the soil, it shall no longer give you its produce. You shall become a restless wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is too great to bear, since you have now banished me from the soil, and I must avoid your presence and become a restless wanderer on the earth. Anyone may kill me at sight. Not so, the Lord said to him. If anyone kills Cain, Cain shall be avenged sevenfold. So the Lord put a mark on Cain lest anyone should kill him at sight. Adam again had relations with his wife, and she gave birth to a son whom she called Seth. God has granted me more offspring in place of Abel, she said, because Cain slew him. The word of the Lord. Offer to God a sacrifice of praise. God the Lord has spoken and summoned the earth, from the rising of the sun to its setting. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, for your burnt offerings are before me always. 
Why do you recite my statutes and profess my covenant with your mouth, though you hate discipline and cast my words behind you? You sit speaking against your brother, against your mother's son, you spread rumors. When you do these things, shall I be deaf to it? Or do you think that I am like yourself? I will correct you by drawing them up before your eyes. comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Pharisees came forward and began to argue with Jesus, seeking from him a sign from heaven to test him. He sighed from the depth of his spirit and said, Why does this generation seek a sign? Amen, I say to you, no sign will be given to this generation. Then he left them, got into the boat again, and went off to the other shore. The Gospel of the Lord. There is, oops, camera, lights, camera, action. There is a lot to this first reading from Genesis and to unpack it might take a little bit of time, so I'll take what time I can uh, to try to unpack so much that is here. The first thing I would say about this reading from Genesis is that it does not teach that Adam and Eve only had two kids, where these other people come from. That's a question people always ask. Well, where did these other people come from if they only had two children? It's not the story of how many children they have as it is the story of two of their children, uh, or three if you count Seth, and it's a record of the first murder and what led to that murder. The second thing we see here is Eve, who recognizes the fact that life is a gift from God. She says, I have produced a man with the help of the Lord. And she recognizes, acknowledges that it is by God's hand that life is conceived. And she gives thanks to God for the gift of life through her as she bears her first children. So she has two children that we know of, or three, but let's talk about these two, Cain and Abel. Abel becomes a shepherd. So we see shepherding is one of the first uh, professions that are out there. I often say if you've ever seen a flock of sheep and how defenseless they are, had there not been shepherds, sheep would have gone extinct a long time ago. It's shepherds that keep sheep around because they have absolutely no defense mechanism except their hearing. They know the voice of their shepherd. It's their only defense mechanism. But that's a homily for another day. Abel becomes a shepherd where Cain becomes a till of the ground. A. Cain is, he's, he's a farmer. And it comes time for the two boys to give thanks to God. So Cain takes the best of his uh, produce and he offers it as a sacrifice, while Abel takes uh, the best of the firstlings of his flock and offers it in sacrifice. So you would have, in the Jewish mindset, two different offerings. One is a cereal offering, the offering of the grain, and then you have the offering of the sacrifice of the lamb. And we reveal that the sacrifice of the lamb is a far greater offering to the Lord than the grain. God was not saying here that Cain was wrong or bad. It had to do with the sacrifice that was being offered. To offer a living creature uh, to God in the form of the lamb that probably tasted good if he didn't burn an offering to the Lord, is <laughs> far greater than the offering of the first fruits of the field. God was more pleased with Abel's sacrifice. But again, that would be a homily for a whole other day to talk about sacrifice. 
perhaps a whole class. So the Lord looks with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering he did not. And here we see the beginning of a process of how one sin leads to the other. Cain is greatly resentful and is crestfallen. So in his pride, he is crestfallen over God being more pleased with Abel's sacrifice. He's not happy for his brother. And nor did he say to the Lord, Lord, how would it be able, I be able as a farmer to make a better offering? Perhaps the Lord would have told him, well, Cain, why don't you take uh, your first fruits of your harvest and uh, exchange it to, with your brother for, to buy a lamb from him and offer a lamb in sacrifice? Cain doesn't seek a solution to how his offerings could be better, nor does he find happiness for his brother, that his brother's offering was acceptable to God. Instead, Cain becomes angry at his brother. He's crestfallen. His pride is hurt. And we see how his pride then leads to envy. He's envious of his brother. Envious because his brother's sacrifice was acceptable and his was not. Now God has a little conversation with Cain. You see how gentle God is? How good God is to these boys? How close he is to them? He speaks to Cain. And he says to Cain, why are you so resentful and crestfallen? You can picture it like a dad sitting down with his son and going, what's wrong? <laughs> why are you so upset? You know? And, and the Lord tries to give Cain some good advice. You know, he says, if you do well, you can hold up your head. But if not, sin is a demon lurking at your door. His urge is toward you, yet you can be his master. So the first part of this, we, our Lord is saying to Cain, if you've done okay, hold up your head, it's okay. But then he says something very interesting, which I think is good advice for all of us. That sin is a demon lurking at our door. Are you going to open the door to it or not? Each of us have the ability to open that door or keep the door closed. Each of us have that authority in ourselves, whether or not we're going to choose to open the door to sin or keep the door closed to sin. And the Lord's making it very clear to Cain that he can either open the door to this demon or shut the door to this demon of sin. And he says, his urge is towards you. Sin is urged towards us, it's seeking us. Or should we say, we have concupiscence, we have that inclination to sin. But sin's urge is towards him. This demon lurk at the door. You kind of get a picture of a, uh, perhaps a, a lion that is sitting at the door who's thirsting to eat the person inside. <laughs> you know, it's lurking at the door, walking around the house, pacing, looking to get it. its urge is to eat the person inside, right? St. Peter will use that imagery. He'll say in his letter, uh, uh, Satan is like a, is like a lion. Uh, uh, I forgot exactly how he puts it, but he compares his sin to a lion looking to eat you. But then he says this, yet you can be his master. So you can see human nature was not fully corrupt in that they had no choice against sin. Our Lord is telling Cain, who's in the state of original sin, conceived and born in original sin, that he still, even in the state of original sin, can be a master over the sin that's lurking at his door. Imagine us who have the state of grace and of all the fullness of grace of the Holy Spirit, the seven goldfold gifts of the Spirit, how we should be able to master sin with the grace that's been given us. He didn't have the sevenfold gifts of the Spirit. He didn't have the sacraments that we have. We're in a better state than Cain was in. And God is saying to Cain, you, you could do this. If he can, then certainly we can. But Cain ignores the advice of God himself. And in his pride, falling to envy, his envy will then lead him to wrath. And so kindly he says to his brother, let's go out in the field. And Abel obviously thinks nothing of it, that his brother has any ill intent, so we don't know how Cain said this, but it must have been said very nicely for Cain to take his brother out in the field and then kill him. Killed him. 
So you see how pride led to envy, envy led to wrath, and that wrath led to the first recorded murder. Brother against brother. He murders his brother out of envy, which led him to wrath. This is a process that has fallen over and over again. Our pride often leads us to envy, our envy leads us to wrath, and then we will murder people with our minds and how we think of them. We can murder people with that powerful tongue of ours. We can murder people's reputations. Certainly this happens a lot online, using the internet, texting, emailing, blogospheres, and so forth. People are murdering people's reputations all the time. Not physically, but there is other types of murder as well. Destroying someone's reputation and so forth and speaking ill of them, it's a form of really wrathful behavior that is quite common today, particularly among young people. We're told about, a lot about bullying. In my day and age, it was usually the one or two bullies in the school, and once they got beat up, they were done. <laughs> Today, everyone's cyberbullying each other, right? All these anti-bullying things aren't working because the more they say it, the worse it gets. Anyway, that's just another homily for another day. And so, our Lord then approaches Cain. Where is your brother Abel? You see how our Lord always does this? He knows what's going on, but he gives us the opportunity to fess up. He did it to Adam and Eve, too. Adam, where are you? Who told you you were naked, Adam? Eve, why have you done this? Our Lord asks questions. He wants us to come forward. He wants us to spit it out and admit it. You see how he's such a good parent, right? Where is your brother Abel? And he lies. I do not know. I do not know. Ooh, you little liar mouth, you do too. Am I my brother's keeper? How sarcastic he gets with God. Am I my brother's keeper? Boy, you can build a whole homily on just that one sentence of Cain. The question of God and Cain's response. Again, another day. I have a lot of homilies coming up, don't I? And our Lord says, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the soil. Your brother's blood cries out to me from the soil. I'm gonna pull this together here because I realize just I'm going along. (laughs) To say that we should be attentive on ourselves to this, but one of the last piece of importance here is that God gives the punishment for his crime to Cain, but then shows Cain mercy. Cain says, well, others will kill me. Who? His other brothers and sisters who are ticked that he killed his brother Cain. <laughs> his brother Abel, right? His, he has other brothers and sisters. That's who he's talking about. They're going to try to kill me, you know? So he's afraid. And look how merciful God is to Cain. God says, not so. If anyone kills Cain, Cain shall be avenged sevenfold. And he puts a mark on Cain so nobody would touch him. He even shows mercy to Cain. He shows mercy to him and he protects him. God still loves Cain. Even though Cain committed the first murder, our Lord still shows him such compassion and such mercy. All right, well, I ran out of time, I think. There's so much here to think about today, so much to reflect upon. Whatever the Lord spoke to your heart today, sit with it, chew on it, (laughs) and mull it over and consider what the Lord wants to say to us today. What a beautiful reading about the mercy of God. What a beautiful warning about how sin could be uh, uh, as after us. What a beautiful direction to the Lord that we could actually master sin if we so choose. What a beautiful warning against envy and pride. What an incredible moment of God to show us that even in the worst of sins, he is still a God of mercy. May God bless you and Mary keep you.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us. And may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore, he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
in memory of me. The mystery of faith. I am your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Benedict, our Pope Emeritus, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
made and had their fill. And what they craved, the Lord gave them. They were not disappointed in what they craved. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a beautiful, blessed day. Be careful today with the ice storm coming our way. If it looks bad tomorrow, there won't be adult day formation. If it looks bad in the evening, the roads seem a bit difficult, so please don't travel out on the bad roads. <laughs> or even this evening, if there's no evangelization meeting, if it looks bad by uh, 5, 6 o'clock, please don't travel out for the meeting. We'll cancel it so that we don't have any accidents along the way. So uh, thank you everyone who attended the meeting last night. It was very helpful uh, in talking about the property. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, Lent is two days away. Get ready. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Yes, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Say, Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.